Hello, just testing things out. Let's see here. Uh oh, I hit the wrong thing. Control B and enter. Let's see here how that looks, how the color is. Four is watching. And everything is upside down. Maybe I'm going to have to go to the other side of the table or something. I'm just testing everything because I got a little bit of a different setup tonight. I'm just testing everything because I got a little bit of a different setup tonight. And let me turn this off. Okay. Hi, Kathleen. I still had your um, items from the sale a month ago, and I, for some reason, cannot, I don't have your email information. So if you could send that to me, I would appreciate it. Um, tonight, I'm going to do a tutorial to show you some of the things, some of the ways that I use leftover hankies and pieces of linens and handkerchiefs and you know i just make all kinds of things because so many times when i buy linens it is stained. hi angela th thanks for popping over and for some reason all of the i don't know if it's going slow hi trisha how are you so um then at the end after I show you how to do things, and if you have some hankies, if you want to go get them and you can work along with me on some of these projects, I'm going to actually show maybe about four or five projects. And then some things I'm just going to give you an ideal on how, um, you know, how I did it. So hopefully the sound is okay. Hopefully the picture is okay. Um, I really can't see all of the comments. Hold on, I know why. Let's see if that's it. Okay. So it looked like it's about, we've got about five minutes to get started. I don't know if my daughter's going to pop on or not. Hi, Deanna, how are you? I did get everybody's packages out in the mail between yesterday and today. So everyone should get their packages this week. Um, so while we're just waiting, I'll just give you, uh, I'm just going to show you some of the things that I, ways I use them while we're waiting. Like this here, this is a Christmas hanky. This is just an old piece of lace here. I don't know why it's like this. My computer is frozen. Okay, uh, this is a bracelet. And out of this particular handkerchief, I got four projects. The four, no, five, five projects out of this hanky here. And this is a bracelet and it has charms on it. And I will show how to make that. Ooh, ooh. This is a little angel pen, which I'm quite sure everybody have seen these before. It's a little angel pen. Um, what else? This here um, is like origami kind of, but it's a hanky that you fold in certain ways and it makes a little dress and you can use it to make a quilt. You can use it just to frame. Um, I also will show how I make potpourri. I mean, uh, little sachet bags. This smells so good if you were close. It was, I mean, it just smells heavenly. If this one has lavender in it, to stick it in your drawer, to hang it on a shelf. And I'll show, that's a project. I'll show you how to make that. This little angel girl here. I kind of messed up on her lips because I was trying to rush to get it all done and ready. 
and this is the back, but this thing can hang or, and this little candle I put in here actually lights up. I don't know if you can see it on screen, but it does actually light up. I don't know. Let me turn that back off. What else? Oh. This is a journal. Well, actually, it's just a journal cover. So you can just go to the Dollar Tree, buy some inexpensive journals. And from that journal, um, just make covers. And then when that one's finished writing in that one, just go get another dollar store journal and you just keep replacing the uh, thing. It just slips right out. And I will also show you how to make that. This is something I made years and years and years ago. This is a little purse. And it's just all hand sewn. Um, in, today, in tonight's tutorial, everything I'm going to be using a glue gun. But usually I do sew, you know, everything with a sewing machine. And this has a little porcelain doll face on it. Mm -hmm. And... These are also journal covers. These ones here fit um, like the black and white composition notebooks. I'm not finished with these ones, but I did want to share it with you. These ones actually have the padding in it and I quilt around them. That's one there. And this is like a, a piece of fabric. This is an old piece of lace. You'll see me using some of this particular ribbon right here tonight. This is uh, the, just a piece of lace again. And then I did this one as well. And this is all just sewn onto a piece of muslin. I think this was a, from an old handkerchief. But it's a great way to use pieces of linens that's messed up. And one more project I'll show you today is one of these purses and this is just made out of a um just a, a doily but it had some spots and stains on it and it does open up hold on let me unsnap it and i actually lined the inside of it with another doily that had stains and stuff on it okay so um hi norma jean or Jeannie. If you have any questions, just ask and I will try my best to answer them. I'll be glancing over at the chat. Um, I think my daughter may be on and another friend that knows how I do some of this. I think she's going to be on so she can answer questions in the chat as well. So I think we're going to go on and get started. It's right at nine o'clock because you know me, I don't like to run too long so we're going to get started make i'm going to show you how i made this first this like i said is just a cover this is just a cheap dollar store um little book notebook journal and it just pops right in like this and then you put this side in as well. And then you just tie it up. So to make this, I'll show you what I started with. These were some napkins. And one of these napkins will make two journal covers. The first thing you do is take your napkin and you fold it in half, directly in half. Then you will cut along this line here, cut along your fold. Okay. So I cut all the way along my fold line. So now I have two. So this is enough for two journal covers. They put that over out of the side. Okay, this is what you end up with. And what I did was I turned under with the iron. I ironed a small hem along the top edge. 
So the first thing I would do is take my glue gun and run a bead of glue all the way along there just to hold that down. So now that I've hemmed that edge, this edge over here was already hemmed. So I only had to do it on one. Then I would take my journal, take my little book, and I would lay my book in there to figure out how much I needed to make a flap. Okay. So I'm hoping you're following along with that. Then I would take my glue gun again. I would really be using a sewing machine. And I would run a bead of glue right along that edge there. And turn it in and fold carefully. So that side is folded and glued. And now I would do the other side the exact same way. This is all done in real time. So you can see how fast this is to make it. And then I would put glue along that edge there. So I have one more edge left. I'd put glue right here. And fold that side down as well. Now your basic book cover is made at this point. I could put my book right in there. And so you could make this any size you want. And you can see this is made. It's just plain right now. The next step I would do is decide how I would like to decorate this cover. And I always start with the cover. And you can see this hanky had some dirt spots on it and everything. But that's okay because I can work around any of the stains and spots on it. And before I start actually gluing, I always kind of randomly place my stuff on to decide where I want it. Okay, so that looks nice there. And this is the same hanky I was telling you out of this handkerchief, I used it for five different projects. So I'm, mm, I don't like that. Maybe I like it over here better. So, you know, kind of play with it to see where you like it. Then the next thing, maybe this is another handkerchief that's messed up. You can see it has a hole right there. So it's in, it has another hole there. So I would take that corner where that hole is right there, right? There's the hole. So I would take that corner and kind of just cut it right across there. And even though that hole is still there in this project, I wouldn't worry about it because I can always cover it since I am, let's put that right there. Pull that out. Let's see if I like that. You say you just play around with it till you get what you like. So that would look nice maybe. And then maybe I would, where that hole is, maybe put a little flower to cover it. I have two of these, so maybe another one there. Um, let's see if I have some other lace that I... Okay, here's some ribbon. So I could tie a bow. And maybe put a bow on that. Okay, so now I've tied my bow. Yeah, and put my bow right in that. Don't like that either. And that's why I kind of play with it before I start to glue it. And that, that looked like I, I might be satisfied with that. Add a couple of buttons.
So then you would just go now and you're ready to glue everything in place. And so what did that take? 10 minutes, maybe seven minutes, eight minutes. So these projects are very quick and easy. And it is a way to keep a lot of items out of the um, landfills. So like these raw edges here, you don't need to really worry about those because you could pull those to the back. And you see how nice that corner would end up looking. You would fold that under there and I probably would take lace and trim that. On this line here, I probably would take some type of wide ribbon and trim there. And this project would be finished or if I wanted it to look a little bit more finished since this hanky is messed up and it might be perfect. Let me turn this over. Remember, this is not glued yet. Let me just put a couple of dots of glue to hold the buttons in place. But just a few little dots of glue on there. So if I still decide I really don't like it, I can kind of take it off. I'm just sticking a few dots of glue a few places because what I want to do I want to turn this over to give you an idea of what I probably would do to the bag. Pull that. I would have that seam come like that. And this handkerchief looked to be about the width of this book. Yes. So I probably would take this hanky, cut it right here, and then... I would take it and I would fold this in so it's not a raw edge. And you can actually finger press that. And see, then I would glue that right there, right there. I put a few dots of glue on it just for you to see what I mean. So when you look at it from the back, it looks very nice. But the neat thing about it now, when you look at this book from the front, you have this very nice lace edge all the way around. Hi, Alyssa. Do you ever start? Yes, you're going to see some of the doilies I have that has been, um, that I have actually starched. And a while back, I did a video showing me starching and making those little ruffly curls in the old fashioned ones. So, but what I would do now on each one of these buttons is I would take some embroidery floss so they look like they're not just floating. And I would tie a little tiny bow. A little bow, hold on here. and pull, make a little bow. You can see that's just a little bit bigger than I want it. Trim those edges off. And then over my buttonholes, and I'll hold this up closer for you to see. See, now it looks like the buttons are actually stitched on. Sometimes I just tie a knot. So that's the first project there. Okay, so I'm going to set that over to the side. And we'll start on project number two. This time, I'm going to be using a needle and thread. And we're going to make this adorable little cute angel here. So this is what we're going to be making. Okay. And the materials we need for that is one corner of the handkerchief. Then another little strip. This becomes her arm. I've already pre-tied a little bow. I'm going to glue a little Christmas tree in her hand, but you could glue anything in her hand. We need a pin bag and a couple layers of tool for the wings. And I've already pre-cut these. These are about four inches by two and a half inches roughly. 
And then you ready? It is so simple. You're not going to, oh, I thought she needs a head and a pearl ball for her head. I want to use this size here, actually. So the first thing I do is I take my needle and thread and I knot the end. Even though I already have a knot in my thread, I always do a loop knot as well to make sure that doesn't come out. And I just do a quick running stitch along this edge here. Back and forth all the way across. Okay, and then we pull this tight. Oops. And then I'm going to knot again into knot. When you get down to where you have the loop, take your needle through the loop and pull tight. So this becomes her gown. Then we take the large ball. You can use a wood ball, a pearl ball, or anything. And I'm going to go through there about three or four times because I want it to be really tight. Where's the hole? I'm coming right through the top of her head. Each time, right through the top of the head. When I go through there now, I'm going to go back down to the neck part. And I'm going to make a, a knot. And I always like to go in and put a little dot of glue to hold my threads together so they don't accidentally switch over to the front. Okay. Then I set this aside for a moment. And I take this little strip that I have. It's about an inch by maybe five inches or so. And I fold both ends in. I finger press it. And then I turn it over and I finger press the other edge. And then once you get both sides finger pressed in, put your little dab of glue and fold that together so it's no raw edge showing. You can see I'm folding them together, the two edges. So it's no raw seams on it. This one piece right here, this lovely glue gun. Okay, and then we go down a little bit more till we get that whole thing glued together. Let's go down on this side here. Okay, then to create the illusion of hands, I find the center and I tie a knot. So that becomes where the hands would be. Now we go back to our angel. This is a little bit loose, so I'm going to stick a little dot of hot glue up under her neck. I guess I didn't pull my threads tight enough. Okay, so this is the front of your angel, and this is the back. So on the back, you take your arms. I'm going to have to lay this down to do it. Hopefully, you'll be able to see. So I position my hands so they are about uh, an inch below her head. And then I bring my arms up and I glue them right at the back of the neck. And then you would do your other arm the exact same way. So this is how it looks now. Okay, so now we're ready for the wings. And you notice I still have my needle attached to the doll or to the little angel. And I'm going to go on. I, I just feel more secure when I, I feel better when I'm stitching with thread, needle and thread. So I just want to make sure those arms are on there. 
I mean, they're probably not going anywhere. So you can see how cute she's already looking. The next step we do, we take those pieces of tool we have. I have four pieces. You can use one, you can use two, you can use lace, you can use anything. And I'm gonna scrunch them together right in the middle. You see how it's going? So it looks like a little bow right now. Now I take my needle and thread and I sew right over where I scrunched that lace up, that I tool, this tool, excuse me. And I stitch that two or three times. And I'm going to go back up through my head one more time because that head just seems to be a little wobbly to me. So I'm going to go back through that head one more time. Okay, yeah, that feels better now when I do that. And then I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to pull my thread really tight to make sure that head is on there tight. And then I'm going to knot it twice. So when I get to that loop, I take my needle through the loop. One, two. Okay, and now I'm going to cut my thread. And then you want to spread your wings out. And now she's ready for her little halo on her head. And I forgot to keep a piece of gold out for that. Let's see if I can get it easily. Let's see. Or say if I wanted to, I could take this fake fur and give her a little hair. So let me cut a little tiny strip of this fur. Switch scissors, these scissors are sharper. And I'm just gonna cut a little teeny strip of this fur. And when you're cutting fur, you don't wanna cut through the fur. You, I'm only cutting through the back of the fabric, the actual fabric part. And that leaves the fur attached to the backing. So then if I was gonna give her some hair, Okay. I'm going to take this. It might be kind of hard for you to see what I'm doing. I put a little tiny bit of glue on that edge. Because I'm making her like a wig, basically. And then I cut off the extra. And now I turn that to the right side. And now that's a little wig for her. Put some little hot glue on that head all over. And now we're going to put her a wig on. The other one didn't have any hair. This one has some hair. She wanted hair. You see how nice that's looking? Okay, so now got to get her the little gold crown. Do I see the gold? Uh, it must be way down there. So we're not going to act like she already got her halo or she hasn't earned it yet. I put a little dot of glue. I make my bows sometimes out of embroidery floss because they make nice small bows. And I glue that right there at her neck. Then the very last thing I do to her, since I gave her hair, I'm going to split her hair half on each side of her wing. And I am going to run a bead of glue starting at the head down to the wing. And this is where the pin would go, the pin back. And you want to put a good amount of glue because you want that glue to be able to pop up between the holes of the pin back. And that way you don't have ever have to worry about that pin back coming off. So the only thing she's missing now is her little Christmas tree. A dab of glue and stick that in her hands. And there she is, all finished. 
I think, hi, Pat. Darn, I miss so much, uh, but I watch it over similar to something I make. Oh, okay. Can you, you can watch it again once she's done. Yeah, I am trying to read the things, but also working at the same time. So this is a little pen. And like I was showing you, like she would also look cute. You could take the journal cover I made and you could actually pin her onto a journal cover or something. Or you could put a piece of ribbon on her and use her as an ornament. So there's a lot of uses for these kind of little things, okay? So that was project number two. What else, what else, what else? Oh, now in the comments, I did uh, below, I put a link to this lady's uh, video because she does an excellent job showing how to make these handkerchief little dresses. I'm going to demonstrate it a little bit, but I am not good at this. So that's why I did not sew it or glue it together yet because I wanted you to see the steps. Okay, I'm going to take my one pin out. Okay. I may fumble a little bit with this one, okay? So be patient with me. Yes, I was thinking hang in there, tree. Yeah, that would be tweet on a tree. So this is one handkerchief, okay? So the very first step you take is you take your hanky and you fold it in half, right in half, directly in half, and then you unfold it. Then to the wrong side, now remember you have a center fold here in the middle. You take this end and fold it to your center and you take this and fold it to your center. Okay, so that's the first step. Then you turn it to your right side and you fold from that fold line, you fold that back to the center again. And you do the same thing on this side. But like I said, it's a video I have posted in the comments that shows you step by step how she does this. The next thing you do is you take it an inch down from, you fold it back this way here first, how much you want to, where the bodice would start. And then you fold that up to there like so. So everything right now is the same size. Okay, you notice it's just straight. Then you flip it over to the back carefully. And the first thing you do on the back is you want to form your neckline. So you take this corner and fold it back to there. And this makes a little triangle and you're going to iron that. You can finger press it if you're good. I'm not good. And then you do the exact same thing on the other side. And what I'm going to do to help hold this in place now is I'm going to put some little dots of glue on it. Oops. I'm just gluing that part right there right now. Okay, then the next thing you're going to do, you want to be able to form the little cap sleeve of this and also the flare out part of the dress itself. So you take this point right here where this fold line is, bring that in to the center of this. And this is gonna form another little triangle. Okay, and you wanna put a little dot of glue there This is so much easier when you're actually, you know, gluing in a place as you're working. Take this corner and bring it over to the center. I'm gonna put a little dot of glue there to hold it. And this is actually going to make another little triangle like. And so when you turn that back over, you see this is a sleeve, cap sleeve. Can you see the little cap sleeve here, the neckline? And this is the cap sleeve over on this side. Then you would glue a button, sew a button or put a ribbon there. 
So let's put a little dot of glue there. And now you have a little hanky dress. Let me put another little dot of glue up under where that first fold line went for the bodice. I didn't put anything there. Okay. So like I said, I am not good at this. I have struggled. made me feel like I was special or whatever. But I finally kind of got it. And you can also, on some tutorials, you'll see where they actually fold this toward the front and make a collar. So there's a lots of ways that you can make those. So that's just a quick tutorial. Like I say, I'm not that good at making these, but watch the tutorial down below in the comments and you'll see how it's made. You'll see the link. So that's project number three. And you notice um, this is, you can make it with any size hanky. This one is a scalloped edge hanky. And what's the nice about this one here is it make it look like you got a flower top. It almost looks like it's two different fabrics. Okay, so hopefully that'll help you a little bit. But like I said, go and watch the tutorial and you will really see how it's supposed to be made. Okay, then this next project is a bracelet. And this was made with the center of the handkerchief. And what I will show you, let me get another hanky from back here. And at the very end, I will have a couple of hankies for sale. Like you'll see this handkerchief here, you can see it has a rust spot on there. But other than that, this handkerchief is in really good condition. So I'd be able to use this corner here for a project, this corner here, this is the corner that's messed up. And then this corner here has one little spot, but I probably would put a little piece of lace or something to cover that. But then I would end up, what I end up with after I cut all my corners off, let me show you what I end up with. I would end up with a small handkerchief like this here. And what you do because I don't have this one cut yet. Fold it in half again, and then you want to roll it as tight as you can. And I'd be putting glue on this as I'm rolling it. And then I kind of twist it. Okay. This would not be a pretty one because it's white in the center, so you know you wouldn't see anything. So, but this is basically all I did. And then you can take ribbon or you can take embroidery floss and just wrap around that to extra hold it. Can you see the pink threads on that? Where I wrapped it with pink thread all the way down. Okay, then the next thing I do is I take these little, um, I use a couple of different kinds. This is one, I don't know what they're called, little end caps like. You can use that kind or mm, these ones are really pretty on there too. This is like a little bell one. And you put those on the ends. Then I take either wire and wrap wire around the end of this really tight. And then I pull my wire up through the little hole on on here and then I put I use a jump ring and one of the lobster claws I'm trying to get that open anyway let me show you what a lot here's a gold one this one's not connected to anything that's the lobster claw and that's what I use on one end. And then on the other end, I use, can you see it's just a little jump ring or whatever. Usually I'll put two of those on. 
and that makes your bracelet. But then, you know, I always got to go one step further. And I got so much glue on my hands that my fingers aren't working right. But anyway, that does close. I just found a few charms and a few matching beads. And I just stitched my beads right on there with some extra heavy thread. Or you can use the same wire and wrap that wire around there several times. So it looks really nice when you put that on your arm. This is too big for me. But no, it fits. It's a little elephant. So I think that looks, you know, it looks decent. Thank you, Cheryl. Package toppers. Yeah, you can use them for so many things. Those other, um, the little angel. Okay, so that's another project. I know I'm moving fast, but, you know, I, I don't like to keep y'all all night. Okay, next we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate. Let me close this because I don't want those all falling off the tables. Let me close that little box up. Close those up and put those away. Next, I'm going to show how I made this little angel. And this is made out of a, like one of the little fancy bathroom towels, but this could be made out of a handkerchief as well. And I'll show you the way I did that. Now, if you were making this with a hanky, you would need something, a face color, your flush tone, whatever your face would be made out of. But these ones are all white that I'm demonstrating today. And, okay, got all my stuff cut. I was trying to be organized and everything. <laughs> okay, so this is very, very easy to make too. It helps if your stuff is ironed. This is not ironed. So the first thing you would do is determine how long you, how tall you want your angel to be. Okay, so if I wanted her skirt to be about that long, which is halfway is what I normally do, a little bit more than half, I would cut right along that. Okay, and this is what I'm actually going to use for her arm, the part that I cut off. And you notice this one has a hole in it. What I would do, since it has the hole, I would take like a piece of scrap lace or something I had laying around. And I would just cover that hole just like that with that. But I wouldn't want it to look like I patched it. So I probably would cut a few more little things off. And randomly put some other designs or put a flower over that or something. But that part there will actually be in the back, so it really wouldn't matter. Okay, and I know I do use polyfill, okay? But not everybody have polyfill around the house, but most people are going to have some cotton balls around the house. I would take about three to four cotton balls. Kind of pull them apart a little bit. And this is what I'm going to use for the filler for her head, okay? So to make the head, lay this right in the center. Find the center fold line. I'm going to crease. So that's my center fold. And I'm going to lay that right there. Then I'm going to take this, hopefully you can see this, and fold it down right over that. And I'm going to put a little dot of glue there just to hold it in place. So see, that's going to become her head. This one's going to be a little bit smaller than the other one. And I'm going to pull. See how I'm kind of tucking that, making little pleats. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. That's one. That's two. And then I would put a dot of glue there to hold that in place. And then you go like, oh, that doesn't look like an angel. 
So now what I'm going to do, ooh, just burnt my hand. Take the rest of this and I'm going to pleat it actually to make it easier. I'm going to use a needle and thread. Not this good. But you can see where the head is, that little part right there. Then these two little arms here is going to come out. And you can actually use that as the arms, but I really don't like that look. So what I am going to do now is run where this is folded. I am going to put a gathering stitch. I'm going to knot it. Okay. And I am going to run a little gathering stitch. And this is going to make her dress extra full. So I'm going to pull that tight. And then I'm going to go right across on across to the other side the same way. Okay. Then when I pull this up tight, all that is coming toward her back. I know it looks like a mess back here right now, but I put a knot. Then I take my threads and I wrap it around right below her where her head stops. I wrap it a few times and that gives her a head. Also, nice ghost for Halloween, huh? <laughs> okay. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Gritty Grit. Hi, Jody. I don't know if I spoke or not. Okay, now I'm nodding this. Yeah, I know I work fast. So you can see how nice that is looking. Now, remember the piece that I cut off? I take it and I roll it. I just keep rolling that up. And when I get to the very end, and you want to roll that with the cut edge on the inside. Then I'm going to put a bead of glue right on the edge of that in order to glue that down. So that's one side down. And the other side glued down. Okay. So we got a tube now. You can either, and the one I made earlier, I actually put a pipe cleaner in there. But I know not everybody have a pipe cleaner. So this one, I'm tying a knot right in the middle. The same way I did the little one. And then if you want to, you could stick some polyfill in her arms. If you want her arms to flare out more. Then you're going to take this and you're going to pull. Hold on, I got to get by my needle so I don't lose my needle. Okay, this is my needle still hanging on. I leave my needle attached. Then I decide how long I want my arms to come down. Bring them to the back. The same way I did on the little one. You getting a feel for how that's looking? Now you see this arm is a little bit longer, so I want to pull it up a little bit more. There you go. And then you can either glue or stitch those arms in place. And you don't have to really worry about how this look on the back because your next step, you're going to be putting the wings on and the wings will hide all kinds of multitude of sins. Okay. So there's that. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Okay, so now 
I'm flaring her dress all the way out so you can see. Now, the next thing we're going to do to her is make her wings. And I have cut. I've already pre-cut my tool for these. This is a piece of tool about six inches wide. And tool is 54 inches wide, this particular one, I believe. And I'm going to fold that three times. And then you can leave it folded or you can cut it either way. And you want to crunch that up right in the middle, just like we did with the smaller ones. You see how that's going to look? And those will become her wings. So let's turn her over. My needle, where are you? I thought I stuck you in the head. Hold on, I gotta find what happened to my needle here. Here it is. Okay, comes around from that side. Now, since these wings are so much thicker, what I usually do with that again is run a little gathering stitch. I just go in and out, in and out. I don't know if you can see that. And pull those tight so it gathers up. And my wings probably not straight, so I'll probably go back and cut them. So they will be straight or it allows me to give them some shape. Okay, so then I am going to knot this off. Okay, I'll knot it off. And then I go back and I look at my wings and you can see this wing is only about four inches and this other wing is five inches. So therefore I do have to trim my wings some. So what I'll do, take my scissors. I'm really not a measurer, I just visual. Okay, so now you can see how short I have that, that wing there. So I kind of hold it up where I can see. I'm going to turn it this way facing me. And I am just going to trim that so they are about even. Okay, so now she needs her hair. Have that same white fur. First thing I do is measure the head. So it needs to be cut right there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut another little piece because I know I'm gonna need another little piece for her. Okay, so then I take my glue gun and put some glue around the back of her head only. The longer piece of fur, I take and put right around the sides of her head. And you could use yarn for this. You could use, you know, she doesn't have to have hair. Then I would take another piece of fur and glue right here. Unless she's a balding old man and I don't, I don't want her to be a balding old man. Put some glue all around that part there and put it real close to where the part would be because she's going to have a side part. This, is this little piece here. See how nice that looks? Looks like a little part. She needs a little more glue right there. Put a little, lot, a lot, a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue there. Okay, so now her hair looks real nice in the front and in the back. Then I have this little, um, this is what I was looking for for the little one too. 
I'm going to make a little halo out of this gold trim here. And this is just pick, picking up bits and pieces of whatever I have. I put a little bit of glue there and it's going to form like a little tiara, a little crown, a halo. And I decide where I want that to be on her head. And put a little bit of hot glue all the way around the base of this little circle lace. I'm going to make hers kind of tilt to the front some. So that's basically how she's looking now. And I hate that I end up with a gather right in the front of her face. I wasn't paying that much attention. So since she had that gather, I'm not going to give her eyes and stuff. But this is just regular blush. And I just use my hands and put a little blush on her cheeks. Okay, just a little blush on the cheeks to give her a little bit of um, personality. And then for my eyes and so forth, I usually use these little micron pens. And because it does, a lot of people think you can use Sharpies. I personally never have much luck with Sharpies. It, it tends to spread. So make sure you use something that is archival and um, where say it doesn't smear and all of that other stuff and that's permanent. And to make this permanent here, you can use some hairspray and just mist on it or any type of fixative. And the last thing I would add on her, I would make a bow up at her neck. Oops. I would do a bow up at the neck. Put a little dot of glue on that. Whoops, glue gun fell over. Okay, so now she has her little bow at her neck. And then on her, I think I'm going to let her hold a wreath instead of a candle. And this is just that um, stuff. You can buy it. It's like Chanel, but it's not. It's like little bits of holly and stuff. I would just form a wreath and I would just glue it right to the center of her hands. Then now, of course, she needs a little bit more. So let's put a couple little pine cones on there. And you could tie a bow on it or anything, but that's basically the finished. She got some threads. You know, but that's basically how the finished angel look. I'm trying to spread her dress out for you to see the whole um, picture of her. So, I mean, I think that looks pretty decent for, you know, it's quick. Hi everyone, I've been watching, but I had to call Julie six days of waiting for pet food. <laughs> FedEx lost it. <laughs> well, hopefully they find it or send you some more. I it's not that I make it look easy, Teresa. It is easy for real. It's it's very easy. So, you know, you could set her on your tree, on a branch of the tree. Um, you know, it's a lot of different things you could do with her. Okay, thank you, Gritty Grit. What else? Oh, y'all going to like this next one. No, before I do that one, let me show you two more things. And then I'll do the last project. This right here is just, you want to make a little change purse for somebody. Or you want to make a little gift card holder. But you want to give them something that they can use again. So you just take a handkerchief. And let me show you how you fold this. Okay, this is the whole hanky here. So the first thing I do, let me move that out of the way. I fold this end in and this side in until they're overlapping a little bit at the center. 
Then you fold this up so it's touching the fold line. Then you just fold this up this way. So now you have a little envelope. And to hold this down to the sides, you don't want to put glue on it because you want the person to be able to use the hanky again. So what I generally do is take, oh no, I'm trying to find two little bitty ones. I don't have two itty bitty ones. Usually I have them little bitty gold safety pins. And I'll put a pin on this side. And a pin on this side. This pin is not sharp right there. Get another pin. I don't want to use a ginormous one. It's a huge one. Why is these pins not wanting to go in here? There we go. But you know, who wants them big old safety pins showing? Nobody. So take you some ribbon. Let me get a piece of ribbon out of my thingy. And I thought I had left everything on top that I was actually going to be using. So take you some ribbon, run through your safety pin. Now you take your ribbon, run through your safety pin, and tie a bow. You could tack this down, but then you have to try to, um, the person would have to be careful not cutting it or anything. Tie a bow on that side. A bow on this side here. And you can go back and neaten your bows up after you finish tying them to kind of get them even. Okay. And then cut your bows cute. So now you have a neat little pouch to put money in you can make this to fit a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill to put in there you can make it smaller to fit a you know regular gift card and you just fold it up like that now that is simple that's like two minutes yeah so that's real quick right there that's a quick and easy project and you could sew buttons on it you could get as fancy as you want with it so that was that one. That was just a real quickie. The one thing I didn't do, I forgot to bring in the house, so I can't show that one, is how you make the, um, use like the birthday cards. You cut a slit in it, and um, it looks like it's the dress of the girl. And the next thing is this adorable little, it would look much better if I had pressed it. This is just a little sachet, and it smells so, so good. It's lavender. But this piece of little doily, I think it was a door, uh, like a bureau scarf or something, it had a ton of holes in it. So, but you can do the same thing with a handkerchief. You can see all those holes in this. Move off of here. See hole there, hole there. I mean, the fabric is basically dry rotted. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut past the hole. Then I want to fold it in half, make sure it's even. Now you could leave it like that if you wanted to, but you know, you don't have lace here and you don't have lace there. So what I do is cut this in half again. So now I have this in here with lace. And I have this edge with lace. So you take this and put it down like this. So now you notice you have lace all the way around. So this corner is rounded. So I want to round off the corner of this as well. 
so it'll fit very neatly right on there. So then take you some hot glue and right around this edge here, go on and put your hot glue because what it is, you're creating a pocket. Oops, little spot there I missed. So now you can see I'm getting a little pocket going on here. So I'm going on the rounded edge. I'm putting more glue, but I'm still leaving an opening because I have to be able to get my lavender into the pocket. So you want to make sure it's all closed except for one little spot. And you can see it's a little pocket there. Then I take my lavender. Like I said, it smells so good. And this lavender is years and years old, and it is still as fragrant as it was the day I bought it. And I take it and put it on a teaspoon. And I put a couple of teaspoons in there. Each one takes about, I usually put about four teaspoons in each one. Okay, let's put one more little teaspoon in there. Put that away, seal that up tight. Okay, then I take my glue gun and I'm gonna close up this opening here. Okay, I'm good doing good, time-wise. Oops, one thing I forgot. Before you close that up, you want to cut a loop of a piece of um, ribbon. This is about eight inches long. And I can pull this open because it's still hot. And burn my fingers, but it's okay. Okay, so that's basically how it looks. And if you want to cover this raw edge up here with the lace that we cut off, I mean, this is like extra. You don't have to do this part because only you know that it had, you know, it's a raw edge. So I put a little bit of glue right on that raw edge and come around as much as I can. And I just piece that little bit of lace back on there. And I do need another little piece of lace right here, another little piece. Okay, so now that's all put together. It would have been nice, like I said, if I had ironed it first, but I didn't. Then we're going to tie a bow and put some trim to decorate that up. We we'll use some lavender since it's lavender in there. Here's a little bit of pearls on my table. Here's some bows. And what I do now is I just randomly start placing stuff. No particular order. Put your spot of glue there at the top. You want to put your decorations from where you have your hanger. So then I will put my bow on. I kind of like that on it. But I think what I'm going to do is put that there. And cut a few more of these little purple or lavender color okay that's one there i didn't think this one through before i started gluing them on okay <laughs> oh miss t it's the role model for sweetness <laughs> okay so i'll put a little bit of glue there and a little dot of glue there and glue these on here. 
And then to bring that lavender back in, these would make wonderful little Christmas presents um, or a nice gift for yourself. Okay, so, ta-da, finish. So, I mean, isn't that, isn't that cute though? And if you could just, I wish you could just smell it. It smells so good. Okay, that lace. Okay, so that was that. And the last project I'm going to show you is, this is a big one here, is this purse. You're probably thinking to yourself, oh, that's going to take a long time. No, don't. Hi, Tanya. How are you? Don't take no time. This is another little piece of that same handkerchief that I told you I got five pieces out, five projects. Another little piece of that. Okay, so we're going to make this purse now. And I have to say thank you to Margo over at the Vintage Peep Show. She's the one that sent me this lace, these pieces of uh, fabric and stuff, these doilies, and they had some stains on it. But it was okay because I was able to work around the stains. Okay, so I took the width of this. One edge was finished off and the other edge had been cut. Now, I did have to trim it a little bit more to make it work. And then I took another bureau scarf. You can see that's just another scarf. And I laid it right on top to match it. I'm going to let this here, this side hang over just a little bit because I want to fold this over that raw edge on that side. Okay, so we're going to start on this side down here. Can you see that in the frame? Okay, and what I'm going to do is put a glue stick in. This glue stick is almost gone. And I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way just right across there. And I'm going to take that and fold it down because I don't like raw edges. Now... I'm going to run a bead of glue right on the top edge of the doily. Now, normally I would be sewing this with a sewing machine. I tell you, my hands, I burn them so much. So see how nice that looks, that edge? So it's all finished. The next thing you're going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way down the side. So now I'm gluing the lining to the actual doily. And it's better if you put the glue on the doily because you know that way it's going to be because the mat, the piece of doily, the crocheted piece of doily, is bigger than the other doily. Okay, so I got that all the glues all the way down there. You see how I'm just sticking that right together. Okay, all the way down. And like I say, it's a tad bit longer. There is one little tiny spot right there. And I was trying to avoid the spots, but you know, I couldn't avoid that one. So, ooh, ooh, I'm going to turn that around. And now I have to glue that edge down. But if you notice, I got a little bit off on that. So before I actually start gluing, I am going to trim that ever so slightly. It's better to have it a little bit too big than too small. Okay. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing. Put me a bead of glue all the way down here. Hot glue is very hot, by the way.
Okay, so now I have that all glued down on both sides. Now I take this, uh-oh, on this one I forgot. Okay, because remember I had to let that little scalloped edge of the inside lining doily. So I want to put a bead of glue all the way on that. I'm going to put it on each one of the scallops at a time because it, this glue dries pretty fast. So see this purse, when you look down into it, when you first open it, it's just as pretty on the inside as it is on the outside. Look how pretty that looks. Now I take my purse and I fold it up and I decide how much of a flap I want. And I'm making these cross shoulder bags. So I have cut a piece of ribbon and you can measure to see how long you want yours. This one is uh, 24, about 48 inches long. And then I want a little bit of decoration on my handle, my scrap of it. So I like to take old zippers. I just buy like zippers when I find them. And I'm going to glue this zipper along here. Because this is recycled ribbon too. I don't know if you can see. I think it was some type of bow or something. And I'm just running a bead of glue. I'm going to go back and sew this so I'm not putting the glue right on the edge. Right in the middle. And these, all of these projects is just as easy as I'm making them look. They're not hard. Okay, so now keep going with this zipper. And go a little bit more. And glue that down. Okay, so now where that zipper ends, so it just doesn't look like I just stopped, I would find some type of little lace or something to add on to that. Let me find some trim, something. Okay, I'll use this right here. So I'm going to glue that on there. Right across the top of the zipper. Putting a little bit more on that itself. And I'm going to glue that on there. So this is a great way to use your stuff. We all have stuff. Okay, so now, you know, this is wider, of course. So what I'm going to do now, right on the edge of that, I am going to run a bead of glue and fold this to the back. And the same thing I'm going to do here. Is fold that over. Also, it's because you want to love me through this thing. Miss Pat knew she would reach out to you. <laughs> okay, so now. So that's looking pretty decent. But, I, you know, it's still plain. So I reach back into my little bag of goodies. And I'm going to find me some more stuff. Yeah, I don't like that on it. Oh, this might be nice. Yeah, that pink and brown look good together. So what I'm going to do before I actually put the lace on it, if you look at different laces and stuff, you'll see little applique pieces of lace that you can cut. So I'm going to cut. I don't think I like that big one. Cut right between all of the little strings that's holding it on. 
So you don't have to buy all this special stuff. Just use what you got. I really had no idea where I was going with it when I started. So now this is what I just cut out of there. So I'm going to glue that on. And that twofold, it takes care of that raw edge of my lace, but it's cute. Doesn't that look nice? Okay, then right here, you notice it is still plain over on that side. So this lace here is finished on both edges. So maybe something like that. Eh, I don't know, maybe. But I think I like that little flower thingy. So I'm going to put one of those on the other end of that. And I mean, you could keep going days and days adding. If I was not doing this live now, I would be going to change this around 50 times. Okay, so that's that. And I'm going to glue that one right on there. See how nice that look? And then on this half here, I could either leave it plain or I could do something else to it. Um, you know what? Let's see how this will look. This is this will be tying that pink back in there. Let's find the edge of that. Yep. See, we could put this right down the rest of that. You know, I mean, it's up to you what you would want to do. Okay, so now we got our strap finished. Say, you know, we're gonna add it everything we want, but the purse, we st I still need to add something else to this purse. So let's add. Yep, that looks nice to me. But before I cut, before I actually start gluing, I want to lay everything that I'm thinking about putting on there. I think that's probably good right there, but. You know, I had this still left. So, you know, this might look good. Now, I still got to remember, I got a bad spot on that. That handkerchief there. But, yeah, we, let's add some blue. Now, I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay. Oh, I know what I have this close that I can put my hand on that I think I like better. This. On the rest of my scrap, let's put this trim here, and that'll bring that pink back into it. What y'all think? Yeah, it's a purse. It's a purse. Yeah, I'm going to put this trim on there. Okay, let's stick that up under there. So you don't see the end of that. And pull that other edge of that lace out. Again, this would have been much easier too if it had been ironed, but I'm just pulling things. I have a scrap bag down here on the side of me. So it's just telling me that I'm live. I just got a notification. Okay, so let's glue this down here, all the way down. Don't that look so much better on it? It makes it look so much more finished, right? And then I'm just going to cut that off even with that. I'm not going to finish doing that part because I don't want to keep you all here all night. But let's take this trim now and trim on the front of that. Oh yeah, I like that. Yep, okay, so now what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna run a quick bead of glue all the way across here. And I'm gonna put this pink trim on there. Oh, gotta move that down where I cut that hole. Hold on, hold on, hold on, please don't be dry already. Don't be dry, don't be dry. Okay, yeah. 
So that's adding that pink trim down. And now I'm going to add, you know what? I think I might like that hanging from there and that way that'll hang down over the edge. And then we're going to take this pink lace, the same pink here that we put on the other part and put here. You notice I'm letting this extend over the edge a little bit. That's because I want to be able to fold it back so it's nice and finished on the front. Okay. And now let me cut this here. And glue this edge down here. I'm not using a lot of glue because I want to be able to go back and use my sewing machine. Okay, so now that looks nice to me, but I think we need one more thing on it and I'm going to glue that on there. And I'll go this when I go back, I won't be able to do this on the machine. I'll have to do this by hand when I stitch this piece of lace onto the other lace. Okay, so now, now that I know how I want everything looking, let's cut this lace off here. Okay, now remember, see, I still hadn't glued that up. I was getting an estimate on what I wanted to do, so I know now this is where I want to do that. So the first thing you do is go on and take your scrap, I fold my, I like to fold it like that at the edge, end of my strap and then put that right in there. See, and that'll be glued right in there. Okay. Now I'm going to glue the sides together. I'm going to glue the other side, but I'm not going to glue it all the way up because I need to leave, leave an opening to put my strap in. And I didn't remember I didn't finish my strap all the way. So now, and I would put a little snap right here. So, and this would be folded in and glued these edges. So this would be my over the shoulder, cross shoulder bag. What you think? I think she's using glue to show. Yeah, I, yeah. Normally, I'd be using my sewing machine. Yeah. No, normally, I only sew. I, you know, I use a glue gun, but not for anything like this. Okay. So, those were the projects I wanted to show you. Um, and, okay. And, you know, you was talking about whether I sew or not. You can see on this project here, all of this stuff is sewn on with a sewing machine. None of this stuff is glued on. You can look at the back of it and see all the stitching. And that's how I do the purses. That's how I do everything. I actually use the sewing machine. And see, there's that same, I've had this here, I bet 10 years. I bought a bunch of it at a yard sale years and years and years ago. This is some more old lace. I mean, just a little bit of everything. Okay, so now that's taking me a little bit longer than I thought. I'm going to do a quick, just in case anybody wants to buy, purchase any handkerchiefs or ooh, I'm going to, I have a few handkerchiefs here that I will sell. Let me get this and a pen. Oh, a pen, a pen, a pen, a pen. Oh, I got a pen on the table I can use. Yes. Not that color. So I have a few handkerchiefs. And then any of this stuff that I made today, I will get it finished. And uh, once I get it finished, I will have those, some, some of them for sale. Some of them I won't. Okay. So let's get some hankies out. 
I'll start with these right here. The price is going to be very, very good. It's nothing formal. This is a package of three handkerchiefs. They're still sealed in the box. And this is item number three. And it is $10. So the first person to type in number three will get this item here. Three really pretty, pretty hankies. So that's a set of three hankies. I want to buy the doll right. Oh, she, I'm, I'm going to get to her. I'm going to get to the doll. Yeah, so if you want to make some of your own projects, these hankies would be really pretty because see that little point right there? They would be perfect for the angels. And I see Vintage Conversation. Thank you. you. Give me a minute to write it down because I did not have numbers today. Like I normally do, I didn't have it. Um, okay. Conversation. And this pen does not want to write good. Okay. Make sure that seal's tight. Okay. The next one I have, you know that handkerchief that I showed you I made all those projects out of? It is actually this hanky right here. Don't ask me. I had two that says Arkansas. So it's this, this hanky here. It's kind of a big one. It is. Let's see. How big is that? It's about a 12 inch square. And it is from Arkansas. This is item number five, and it is $3. $3, item number five. I need to get a better pen. This pen is not working good for me today. I had a better pen. Hold on. Let me get a pen that writes right. I see one up there. Let me get stand up. Ooh. I'm trying not to have to stand up. Let me see if this one is writing right. Yeah, okay. It's $3, number five, and I see Debbie. Okay. So now, when you get these hankies, if you make something out of it, I would love for you to share with me. I'd love to see what you make with them. This here, this is a beautiful piece of linen. It's like a demis like, but look at that beautiful pink lace on the edge of it. It has beautiful pink lace. So it's very soft pink, and then it has some of the, um, how you said it, the tagging. It's like a, a, it's a machine stitch, but it almost looks like it's a hand stitch. And this here would be enough to make two angels, just split it right in half, or you could use it just like that. And this is item number 10, and it is $8. And this is, let me see how long this is. This is pretty big. It's 24 inches by, it's about 24 by 12 inches wide. And it has a, a little design in it. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera or not. Yeah, and this is item number 10, and it's $8. Oops, the whole thing came off of there. Okay, let's get to another hanky down here. Oh, this is a pretty one. I have this beautiful one here. A beautiful blue flower in red. Have designed all the way around it. I'm kind of checking. Now, it's not really a stain, but you know how I've been folded so long? It is a little tiny bit of yellowing right there. It's a very small amount. And this is item number 11, and it is $3. Item number 11. And then it has red and kind of a periwinkle uh, flower running all the way around the edge. And this is $3. And I see Vintage Conversation for that. Thank you. Okay. Stick 
that on there. The next one, this one, let me make sure for stains. I don't see any stains. This one is, has a beautiful scalloped all the way around the edge and in each one of the four corners, it has a little basket. Bless you, Mr. Green. It has a little basket in each corner and six little pink dots. And this one is number 22. And this one is $4. It's $4 number 22. It's four dollars, number twenty-two. Okay, let's see this one here. Okay, I do see a little bit of yellowing on this one. Let me open it up, or is it just the way it was folded? Maybe it was just showing the shadow through it. Okay, this one is real pretty. It has a blue uh, scalloped edge on it with blue threads and bouquets of flowers throughout. And um, I couldn't cut some stuff. Up to me. Well, I only cut up the stuff that's messed up. This is number 32. And it's $3. Yeah, this is a pretty one here. It's just that I have so many. Thank you, Tanya. I appreciate it. Okay. Do we have any Marians in the audience? This one says Marian on it. <laughs> it's pretty, but you got to find a Marian, somebody special. It's nice, it's clean, it's no stains or spots. But the person's name was Marion. And this is number 23. And it is $3. Number 23, and it is $3. But you gotta know, no, that this one will be $2. I just seen a spot on it when I fold it back up. So this would be $2 instead of $3 because it is a spot on it. Hi, Tammy, how are you? Here's a pretty one. Look at the size of that rose in the middle. It's a beautiful shade of like cotton candy pink. And then it has a yellow tulip on the other side. And this one is $3. And it is number 20, number 20 even, $3. This is pretty. There's no stain spots or anything on this one. And that was number 20. Really pretty. And I see vintage conversation. Thank you. Okay, let's see what is, oh. Do we have any A's in the house? Look how beautiful. This one is starched really pretty. This is like one of the little fingertip towels for your bathroom. Really pretty. It's a letter A on it. Yeah. And it's a real nice cotton. And it is starched up really good. I must have been bored that day to starch just like this. But this is really a pretty one. And this measures, this is 18 inches long. And this is number 26, and it is $6. Number 26, and it is $6. Beauty. This is a pretty, pretty one. You're right about sewing. I'm definitely guilty then. <laughs> You can have it. Okay. Here's a little plain white. Well, it's really not plain, but it's uh, 
Tanya, number 26. This would be really pretty. I usually say, well, I, I've been saving so many that I got just way too many, but I use these to make collars on doll dresses and stuff. But I just have like so many that if I live to be a hundred, I wouldn't get them, use them all. So that's why I'm sharing some of my extras. But this one is really pretty. There's lots of embroidery on it. This is item number 19. And it's three dollars. It is three dollars, number nineteen. Right. Down here, some. Oh, here's a pretty one with blue. This one is real pretty. And this is actually embroidered all the way around. All these little blue dots you see on there, there it's embroidery. It's not a painted on design. Yeah. These are actually, I mean, this is so pretty. It's so dainty. And this one is item number three. And it's $4. This one is $4, but this is a really pretty dainty one. There's no stain spots or anything, no tears. Number three, Bad Boy Vintage. Hey, when did you sneak in? How are you? I had your other package went out yesterday or the day before, so you should be getting it any day. Jody, I mailed yours out today. What else is down here? Oh, here's another one. Very similar, but this one had like a violet color on it. Look at this one. This one has lots more. Tree. I mean, this, this one has a double row plus a scalloped edge. This is really a pretty one. And this is item number seven. Number seven, and it is five dollars this one yeah the special ones that i don't know if i have a second one after me okay deanna church thank you and of course all of these can go out first class so the um so it'll be very inexpensive to ship them to you and if it's just one i'll just put it in an envelope and that way it'll just be like a dollar shipping now, this one would be great for fall. I'm not feeling these colors too much, but it's like a beigey tan, like a peachy color. It does have embroidered, these little dots right here, they are embroidered on each corner. It's very clean, no stains, no spots. And this is item number 97. And it is $3, number 97, and it's $3. I mean, it's pretty. I just, I don't, I don't know about the colors. Kind of like, this is kind of, the darker color is almost the color of cinnamon. Yes, it's cotton. Yes, these are, this is cotton. It's kind of a cinnamon and a tan color, deep or light, like coffee with a lot of cream. And that was number 97 and it's three dollars vintage conversation thank you what is this one here okay oh ooh, this one's pretty i i show you this one look at this one it has like a three-dimensional flower on the corner the leaves are three-dimensional and it's that very soft, soft, it's like a batiste, a cotton batiste fabric. And it has yellow all the way around the edge. And then in that one corner, it has this beautiful three-dimensional flower. It's really a pretty flower on there. 
And this one is number 89. And it is $5. This one is $5. It is really a pretty one. I must have some extras of this one or something. Yeah, so this is pretty. And that was number 89, and it was $5 on that one. Okay. Then we have this one. This is like a linen. This one is a linen, and it has just the basket in one corner. I don't know if you can see that. Hi, Picasso Cat. Hi, Julia. I didn't see you come in. Yeah, it has this little um, design there in that one corner. And it has blue stitching all the way around the edge. They've hand stitched all the way around the edge of that. And this one is number 93. And it is $3. It is $3, number 93. I like that combination. I love that black basket. It really kind of pops on that one. That is $3, and it's a linen. Oh, okay. Here's a special one. It says, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's all white. There's no lace or anything on it. There's no stains or spots or anything. Doing a very nice job with that embroidery on there. That's the back of it. Yeah, so that's very nice. I like that. And this one is number 99. And it is $5. Yeah, that's a pretty one. I don't come across many Christmas, well, with the embroidery on it like that. I see Tanya first, it looks like. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Here's a real pretty white one. It's white on white, but look at that design. Can you see they stitch it with a very high gloss, shiny um, embroidery thread? Really nice. And then it has like a tone on tone, um, little stripe around the edge of it. That's really pretty. And this one is number 78 and it's $3. Number 78, and it's $3. That's pretty. Bad Boy Vintage. Thank you. I didn't know I had that many in a pile. Let me show this one. This one is like an off-white. I haven't showed any off-white ones. They all have been white background but this one is an off-white with very nice lace on the all the way around the edge there's no stains or spots it's very nice this one is number 72 it's okay even if i repeat the numbers because i'm writing the names on them do you know what the average age of the linens are real sure some of them are very old um some of them that was so old that i really cannot sell them because they the fabric have started to break down because they wasn't like put up and stuff so i would think most of these are from the 50s and 60s into the 70s i may occasionally have one or two newer ones but they're all pretty vintage yes and this one is four dollars and it was number 72 and it's four dollars but this one is it's it's look at the lace on it it's real pretty lace bad boy vintage okay
And when I'm packaging them up, if I should notice any uh, stains or anything on it, I will reduce the price on your invoice. Here's another off-white one with lace all the way around it. This is like a linen, a really nice thin linen. Very nice lace around the edge of it. And this one is number 15. Number 15. And it's $4. Number 15 and it is $4. My specialty textiles on the vintage for sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. I, I think they are pretty old, most of them, because some of them I probably have had like 10 years or 15. Kind of embarrassed to say that, but I've had some of them a very long time. This was number 15, and it was $4. Okay, this one, let me check it for stains and stuff. Very nice, it's kind of a window pane pattern on the cotton. I don't know if you're really gonna be able to see that on the camera, but it's like a window pane pattern. And in the corner, it has like, what's that? Some type of little flower design. And the flowers are shades of blue and then there's some little yellow daisies or something. And it's white and it has like a window pane design. And this one is item number 16. And it's $3. Number 16 and it's $3. Bad Boy Vintage, thank you. Here's another one with initials on it. They try to be so fancy with the initials, but I think it's BSJ maybe. I'm not sure. It's either BSJ. S is definitely the middle. It's definitely the last name. So since this one has the three initials on it, it's very clean, it's starch, very nice. This one I'll do for $2. And it's number 18. Number 18 and it's $2. Okay. I have lots of hankies. I have been saying I'm going to make a quilt someday. Yeah, me too. <laughs> now, I do make a lot of doll clothes out of them, though. The ones with the smaller prints and stuff, I do make like the uh, eight inch doll clothes. They're really nice. And I make a couple of Barbie dresses out of some of them. Now, this is just a doily here, but it's really pretty. Do I want to sell that? No, nah, I don't want to sell that one. I like that. I, I don't know how that one got in there. I think I want that one. May need to make some out of that. Okay. Oh, here's a pretty one. Look at that. Look at that decoration in that corner. That's all embroidered in that corner. And if you could see the size of them teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny stitches. They are so teeny tiny on that flat on them spire. Like it's like a, I can't even imagine what size it is. And then it has embroidery on each one of the other three corners. Has a little white, like a daisy, and then two little dots. But this corner here is woo. I love that. Just a jewelry boo. And this one is number five number five and it's five dollars number five and it's five dollars yeah this is real yeah bad boy vintage i want to send a birthday card or a card to say hello you know what when i send these to you i'm going to send one of them inside of a birthday card to let you see what i do with them 
because I used to sell a lot of them at my booth, but then I don't know. All of a sudden, they stopped selling at the booth, and half the people in the mall started selling some. Look at this one. The flower is like organ, organza. And it is dimensional. You can see I unfolded first. And they've actually cut away on this one all behind the flower. So you actually can see through the whole flower. And then the these two side part petals on the flower, you can see you can lift those up. And this is a pretty lavender. I guess it's like an orchid or something. And this one is item number... Let's go with number eight. And it is $5. It's $5, item number eight. This is really pretty. I like that. Perfecting pearls, Julia. Julia, this is going to be a gift because I appreciate you helping me out so much. So I'm going to just send you that because I do appreciate you and I like to know. Oh, that doll. <laughs> Here is a pretty one. This one is petite. This is a very small one. Oh, I see a little hole on that though. Hmm. Okay, this one do have a little tiny hole. It's about the size of a, it's an eighth of an inch circle maybe, but it's a pretty little square one and it measures, this is an eight inch square, so it is small. Look away from the doll. I got two dolls, I'm gonna show two dolls then. I have another doll, I forgot I had one more. And I'm almost to the end of the hankies that I'm going to show. Almost. This one here is number, let's do number 21. Number 21, and it's $3. And it does have that little hole in it. But the lace on that is so pretty. And this one, I would say this one is probably, looking at the lace, this one probably dates back to like the 30s or maybe the 40s, looking at the lace. Because it's really pretty. Okay. I'm going to do two more hankies, then I'll do the two dolls. And I'm going to do the dolls as offer ups. I'm going to do two more. Let me see what two I'm going to do over here. Oh, here's a pretty one. No, I don't want to do that one or this one. Let's do this one. We're going to do one. Uh-oh, that one's got a hole in it. Not doing that one. We'll do this one then. I didn't iron this one as pretty. But look at the corners on it. Oh, there's a little hole in that one. Won't do that one either. Okay, let's do this blue one. You look at this stuff before you go on and you don't see it. And then as soon as that bright light get on it, you see everything. This one is white with a lots of blue and lights, very soft blue embroidery on it. It's all the way around. Really nice, nice embroidery all the way around. The edges, it's not a scalloped edge because some of the edges are straight, almost like a diamond on the corners. And this one is item number 24, and it is $5. And it's $5, item 24. Are you downsized? And I see Tanya for that, thank you. <laughs> okay, then the last napkin. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do this. These are in great shape. I think it's six of them. They're a little round. Each one is about, I think it's a six inch circle. So it's one. It's like an off-white, um, like candlelight. 
with blue embroidery around the edge and the embroidery look like it's hand done. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a set of six. Beautiful, it's like a, a cornflower blue. So it's not a soft pale blue, it's like a medium shade of blue, one shade lighter than a blue crayon maybe. And this would be item number 29. And for the set of six, it's $15 for the set of six. Very nice lace around the edge. They're very nicely made. And it's more of a linen. It might be cotton, but I believe it's some type of linen. Jody, number 29. Thank you. Okay, so now, yeah, these would be nice. Dollhouse rugs. I see a lot of uses for those ones. Okay, now, where is she at? Where is that other doll? What did I do with it from the other night? Oh, right here. We're going to do her first. Y'all wait till you see the beautiful brooches I got today. I got like so many. It was like brooch heaven when I walked in today. Okay, we're going to do this little baby here. Look at that face. She has red curly hair. And on the words of wisdom on her is joy and inspire. The bottom is placed on a piece of wood. It says handmade with love. And then it has for doodles 2018. Because I made these a while ago. But I still have a few. I think this is my last one, actually. Her hands is wired. She has a little bird on her hand. And then hanging around her neck, she has a little baby, baby mini key. I don't even know if you'll be able to see that little key. It's about, mm, it's very little. She has a little key. And on this side is a little tiara. And she has a cluster of flowers. It's a felted flower, a little satin flower, the little glitter flower. And then she has those little glitter flowers in her head and the little vintage um rayon ribbon and then she has the rayon ribbon tying her shoes with a little felted bow there a flower as well and i'm starting her off as an offer up at twenty dollars start twenty dollars yeah she's an offer up starting at twenty dollars and she is about right at six inches tall. She's about six inches tall. The bottom of the base is covered with some, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, it's scrapbooking paper, but it's like a pink wood-like fabric. I mean, paper. I see Deanna Church at 20. Thank you. Yeah. but look, I love, I mean, this one's face. She's got her head kind of over to the side. She's a little bit shy. And her shoes are uh, white felt. And up under the shoe is like, a, so like I bought those little half of wooden eggs and then I covered it. I see Debbie at 22. And she has like a shabby chic looking fabric on. It's like teals with uh, little tiny, tiny pink roses on. It's very hard to see them. And like I said, her arms, and she's like a real pretty mocha color. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to get ready to call this so we can go. Um, Julia, if you'll count down for me, show the front. And this is the back. So we can go one. Well, it looked like Debbie has it at, well, we'll go once going twice and they do come in their own little box and she will have some you know little trim on her and so for 22 it looks like to debbie 
Last call. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations, Debbie. She's pretty. That's probably the last one I have of her. Now, the last one that I'm going to do is going to be an offer up starting at 35. This is an offer up starting at 35. And she's in the show, even though she's Christmas. She actually has on, this is a hanky, a Christmas hanky, little um, poinsettias all around. So this is an offer up starting at 35. And she is, let me see how tall she is. I think these were, um, yeah, they're almost 13 inches. I see Jody in at 35. And she has um, a little candy cane charm at her neck. She has a little red jingle bell. And this is just some of that um, eyelash yarn. And this is just some rickrack. This is a piece of an old uh, doily, I think it was, that I've just cut. Oops. She needs to get her panties on. I shouldn't have pulled her dress up in public. Sorry. And each one of these come with a vintage button card. I call these Badoodles Buttons Babies. Button Babies by Badoodles. And she has her old bottle brush tree. She has one little button on that card. But look at that card. That card is adorable as well. The button card. You're really a fancy card. I would say these cards are probably from the 40s or so. Show the front. Let me show her face up close. I have my camera overhead today, so it's hard to see exactly where I'm holding stuff. And that's the front. Her hair is a mohair. And it's curly. It's kind of a strawberry blonde, maybe. Then she has that same little piece of doily around her head. And her bow is made out of the same fabric or the same hunky as her dress. She has striped legs. She will come with some little panty thorn. Thank you, Linda. And then she has black and white striped legs. And then she has ribbon, uh, well, not ribbon, yarn tied around her legs with a little sewn on little button. Okay, so we can go in and start counting that down. Which you says she's strong enough to be. No, no. Now, the other ones that I'm working on, those are going to be perfect for a child. These is more for the adult collector. They're kind of like a shelf doll. You set them up on a shelf and look at it. Because the number one, this fabric is very old. And this hanky is, I don't think this hanky is not real old. I don't think that hanky is real old. Yeah. So going twice. <laughs> and we're going to say so. And she will come in a nice box. I didn't have her box up in it or anything, but she will, excuse me, come in a box and she'll have, you know, some little vintage papers and little, uh, and some little stuff with her, something nice. Okay, thank you. Hopping in a little late, but yeah, we're about ending up. Um, I'll show the few hankies that didn't sell. Uh, real quick, it's not many. I'll show the little pile of stuff that didn't sell. And then we'll end up. We'll end. Yes, 11.02. That's fine. I'm getting off at 11. So that was perfect timing. I hope y'all enjoyed the tutorials. And I would love to see what you do with some of these or what you may use yours for. I would love to see that. Um, but I, uh, you know, I, I'm a teacher at heart, I think.
And so I enjoy doing the tutorials to show what you can do with some of this stuff. We had this beautiful pink little fingertip towel. It was 24 by 12, I believe. And it was $10 and I would, I mean, excuse me, it was number 10 for $8. And I will mark this one down to $6. So that would be number six, number 10 for $6. Good night, Tanya. Thank you for joining us. So that one would be now $6, number 10, has the beautiful pink lace at the bottom. That one was left. This beautiful one here with the um, embroidery on all four corners, really pretty. Scalloped edge and this Oh, Janine Anders. Janine, thank you. I got my gift today. Let me pull it out so everybody can see. I hadn't looked at it myself. I was going to do a box opening. But I was so tickled when I got it today. It had just came in the mail late. But I was like, oh, 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 I need to see that. I wanted to look at it, but I was busy trying to... Um, trying to get my projects made. But Janine sent me these things here, along with um, actually Nikki from, I always say her name wrong, so I have to look at it. Black Dog Vintage and Antiques. It says, Miss Pat, Janine Anderson bought these dog clothes for you. I can't wait to see the magic you make with them. Nikki, Black Dog Vintage and Antiques. And she included a nice little note card. This beautiful little bingo card. Some other little goodies in that bag. But I hadn't looked at this. This is what I was excited to see. Ooh, a pretty I think it's a Barbie and they're handmade and whoever made them made this is so nice very pretty love it thank you kind of remind me of like the 60s Twiggy I guess 60s early 70s a little baby sweater A little baby hat, real pretty. Look how teeny tiny. Look at that pretty trim, that yellow. I love that. Oh, this is a little set here. Oh, wait, these are the booties. I'm sorry, they're booties. Those are little baby booties. And a little matching hat to that. Real pretty. Another pair of baby, baby booties. And a pair of panties. You know, I don't like my babies to go without panties. <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Janine. I appreciate it so much. I love it. I'm put that back in there because I need to send thank you notes. And with that, thank you. I appreciate that so much. Okay, so you got me confused. Okay, thanks. So that was $4, number 22, for this beautiful hanky here that has the embroidery on all four corners. So pretty. And this was a special one. We just have to find somebody named Marion. Actually, if anybody named Marion, I will actually give it to them free. Janine, do you know anybody named Marion? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they gotta have some panties. <laughs> okay, I think we got about four more to go here. Had this pretty one here. It was number 19 and it was $3. It has the um, beautiful cutout work all the way around the edge with embroidery in each corner. That was number 19 and it was $3. Number 19 and it was $3. Janine Anderson, thank you. Okay. 
and we had this gorgeous, gorgeous yellow one. Now this was one of my favorites. The flower is kind of um, dimensional in that corner. The only thing holding it on is the little yellow embroidery in the middle. And then it's embroidered um, with a scalloped edge all the way around, more of a zigzag than a scalloped edge. And this one was number 89 and it was $5, number 89. The lady in my town named Mary, but I really don't know her well. Do you know her well enough to give it to her? Julia, I'll put it in there for you. You can, um, <laughs> another, <laughs> if I had embroidered it, I would, but I didn't embroider that one. So that was number 89 and it was $5. Okay. No, you don't. Okay. Then we have this blue one here. It was beautiful. Um, it's plain white, it's a linen. And it has the basket embroidery in the corner with blue all the way around the edge. And this one was number 93 and it was $3. Number 93 and it was $3. It was 93, $3. Then we had this um, cream color, it's a linen. And it is number 15 and it's $3. Number 15 and it's $3. It's a beautiful linen. Love that lace that's all the way around the edge as well. And this one was with all the initials. Janine, thank you. This last one. This, oh, it's two of them left. This one here, I had just $2 on it because it has three initials on it. Um, and the initials on it is B, S, I think it's a J, which, I mean, how many people, do you know? But anyway, this was $2, number 18, $2, number 18. And the last one I had, and I'm going to do this one for two instead of the three. It's a little small, very dainty one. And this was number 21, and I'll do it for two instead of three. And it does have a teeny tiny hole right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a little tiny hole. And this is an eight inch square, so it is a little smaller, but that lace on that is so pretty. Vintage conversation, thank you. And I want to thank everybody for joining me. And um, if you didn't see it from the beginning, please go back and watch and give me some uh, constructive criticism. criticism. <laughs> and, um, you know, and share what you do with some of them. Yeah, I love the tatting on most of the ones with the tatting on the edge. I did keep because it's very hard to come across those now. And this um, older lady uh, was a dear friend of mine for years. She passed about five years ago. She gave me a whole roll of tatting that belonged to her grandmother. So it had to be like, you know, a hundred years old probably because Miss Helen was very old. Um, so, but, you know, I keep most of my tatted ones when I find those. But um, but I'm hoping to do this on Tuesday instead of just a straight up sale. Each week, try to share some type of craft project or something. And then from the craft project, then we'll go into just a short sale. So majority of it really will be more of a tutorial how to things. Because I love to see, I love doing crafty things, which y'all know that now. But also, I like to see what you do with stuff. 
And what I think I'll do next time, next week, is using some of the um, just trims, lace, and whatnots, how you use them for bottles. And like I said, like maybe like demonstrate something like this journal cover, how to use lace on bottles, maybe do decoupage or something. Tatting seems hard to me. So, um, and if you have any ideals of something, great, especially if you can sell items we can use for crafts. Oh, if y'all want a craft show now, I can do a whole craft hour just selling stuff of craft things. Um, you know, uh, maybe do a card making class. Well, you know, uh, I don't know how to tag or crochet, but the tool needs each is at the house. It's very hard. Yeah, I tried learning it and I was just in too impatient. But what I did teach myself this year that I enjoyed a lot, well, last year actually, how to crochet with a teeny tiny uh, cotton thread. And I made a ton of doll clothes. So I will share those one day with you too. I did a lot of those and I, I enjoyed it. So now whenever I go for long car rides, I pack my bag with that. And that's what I sit and do is crochet clothes for little four and five inch dolls. So again, I just want to thank all y'all for joining me. And I look forward to seeing everybody. I will have a short sale on Saturday. It's going to be short. Maybe I'll do brooches only or, you know, I'm not sure what, but, you know, it's going to be short. Um, cause they're having a festival that I want to see if Alyssa want to go to with me. So thank you. And I appreciate it so bad. I can't do fine things anymore. Thank you. And thank you, Tanya. I thought you had went to bed. <laughs> but I do appreciate everybody for joining me and all. Let's see if I can make that happen. I don't have my mouse on here. Oh, there it go, right there. Yeah, there you go. Why is that turning out that color, though? Maybe they'll come out another color when I hit the button. Yeah, they did. Okay. So good night, and thanks, Julia. And I'll be putting yours in the mail to you. Don't look for an invoice, because I won't be sending you one. Go back. Oh, okay. You love, thank you, T um, Debbie. I appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody for coming and joining us this evening. And time to go to night night. My husband think I'm kind of going off or whatever. He's going like, how can you think of stuff to think of or talk about that long every night? I told him a lot of people's on a lot longer and a lot more than I am. So good night. And.